Greetings and salutations, Geo Nerds. So what's this map of this subduction zone under Queensland from millions of years ago, but pro tip, all these orange dots are volcanoes. What's this got to do with? This amazing mountain range just to the south of Ipswich. Everybody sees it, Mount Flinders, etc. And this amazing YouTuber that runs around that mountain range. Have a look at all the caves. What's this got to do with everything? Well, hang around. We'll find, we'll find out, out together. Well, Gio Nerds, today we find ourselves over the valley, over the, looking down across the Story Bridge there. We're just going to whiz down Queen Street, you know, because we can. There's old uh, Stefan's Tower there, left over from Expo. Head across uh, St Lucia, down to, uh, we're going to go to Ipswich. You can see Mount Flinders there on the horizon, that's where we're headed. Go down to where the old Swan Bank Power Station used to be. And we'll head back over here, all those new suburbs there. And if you pull back, you can see that mount, little mountain range there. That's called the Mount Flinders Group. Uh, and there's a bunch of mountains in there, we'll go into that detail. And we'll get today we're going to look at the geology of this group because it's really interesting. And uh, one of my uh, fellow YouTubers in Brisbane has been hauling his ass around there for the last couple of months looking at caves, a couple of years probably, and um, the geology of those caves is actually quite interesting. So we'll have a bit of a poke around there today. I'll give you some details to his videos on that, they're much better than I could ever do. So there we go, and uh, that's what we're going to look at. Hang in there, it's going to be fun. Well folks, where are we? Well, we're in South East Queensland, just to the south of Ipswich. And this is known as the Flinders Peak Group, or the Flinders Group. Well, they didn't give it the range of name, the Flinders Group. There's a bunch of mountains in there. Uh, there's more than are actually labelled here, but how did they get here? Well, the reason they're mountains is they're harder than the stuff around them. So here we're going back, look at the mega years up top there, millions of years. Here's Australia, it didn't look like this then, but these are, look at the little orange dots. This is volcanism on the east coast. All of a sudden, something really changes underneath us here in southeast Queensland, and we go off. And these mountains were formed then. So if you look, this is the um, volcanism in southeast Queensland from this era. Uh, and we'll call this the Cenozoic era, um, 35, 30 million years ago. And if you have a look, there's two lowly little outcrops right here where the stuff punched up into the rock. Now the basement rock out here, oh, and by the way, it happened somewhere else too. Glasshouse Mountains, we'll talk more about that later. The basement rock here is sandstone, Jurassic sandstone. You switch the cold measures, they're all Jurassic, they're back in that period. And as you can see here, they track along a line because these are hotspots. And as you can see, these hotspots have been named and followed all this time. Here's a bit of a diagram of how this works. It's the one in the middle we're looking at where a mantle hotspot just bubbles up. But these things did not erupt. They solidified in the core called a pluton. Uh, and they form trachyte, which is what they're made out of. Now, as you can see, this area is pretty low. You take the trees away, this is really hilly. You're gonna go walking through this. You better know what you're doing. But here's, um, Two mountains, Mount Perry and Mount uh, Bl Blaine, which are really remarkable. They're both very conical, and Blaine is actually square-based conical, which is really unusual. But not impossible. It just means there's a hard core of rock in there, and it's just the angle of repose has fallen down and formed this. They don't look so much like that with the trees on them, but as you can see, they're pretty special. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, the macro view now. Where Gel's caves are is actually in sandstone. We'll see this in a second. Here's the geology. The red bits are trachyte. Uh, and there's other stuff there. There's some basalt, which is the pink stuff. And there's a whole bunch, of, there's a quite a lot of geology going on here. The l l dark green is um, the Ipswich coal measures. This is ivory rock. This is a little unusual because it's a big sill, as you can see, a big dike. But one end of it is trachyte. The other end of it is rhyolite. Even I have no idea how that happened, but anyway, it is. 
That's been confirmed on the ground. Just off to, off to the map, this white stuff is dolomite. This is a sedimentary form of magnesium uh, limestone. Uh, and just up the road, that little hill there, that you can see the mountains, that little hill, that's Castle Hill. This is basalt. They're mining basalt here. And you can see, here's the mine in a great big vein of basalt. Okay, the old uh, Queensland Rail likes basalt for their uh, ballast. So let's have a look at uh, Gel out there doing his thing in the caves. Teen Angels from his prehistoric block of glacier ice comes the world's first superhero, Captain Caveman! Sorry, John. I couldn't help it. It was just too hard. It was just too much. So this cave you're in here is made out of sandstone. All of it. Uh, and I know you told me where it is. I'm not going to disclose that. But this is this is a drop from one of your videos. This is well and truly sandstone. You see, the outside's hard to tell because it gets uh, oxidised. But the inside, this is... Good old Ipswich Jurassic sandstone. If you dug down deep into this, you'd find some coal. You've actually climbed a mountain like Mount Bloom before in one of your videos. A little place called Walsh's Pyramid, or as we used to call it, the Gordonvale Pyramid when I grew up there. I used to see this out of my bedroom window every morning when I went to school. But there are some other trachyte mounds in southeast Queensland. And one of them is, of course, known as Mount Biwa. This is a seriously large trachyte mound. Seriously large. And, uh, I've climbed this, you shoot yourself for the first 50 metres, after that it's not too bad, but that first bit, if you can get over that first bit, the rest of it's easy. Uh, and it, God, don't let it rain when you're up there. You just stay there for a week till it dries off. It's as slip, slippy as goose shit, that bottom area. This is a seriously spectacular mount, and well and truly worth climbing if you ever get up there. So um, I've taken some images of this, because when you look at it, it does look a lot like bits of Mount Flinders. Oh, Flinders Peak. By the way, Flinders Peak was named by um, John Oxley. Um, named after Flinders. Flinders originally saw it, and he called it High Peak, and Oxley renamed it to Flinders Peak. Let's have a bit of a look at Flinders Peak, actually. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, well, Flinders Peak's is a great big lump of trachyte, as we've said before. But surrounding it is also where the trachyte hardened in the sandstone. It cooks the sandstone into what's called quartzite which is a very hard version of sandstone. You'll find it around the place, but not on the peak itself. This is all the old plutonic plug that hardened quite slowly under the ground. It's fractured to hell. Now it's falling to pieces, as you've seen. There's some quite amazing uh, rock formations up here. There's caves in it where the pieces have fallen out, whatever. But it is very spectacular, well and truly worth climbing, if you're so inclined. Um, also up this way, there is... Uh, some interesting plant life. You'll see in a lot of these uh, images I've shown you uh, a grass tree, or they're known as a xanathoria. Or xanathoria <laughs> sounds like a disease. Uh, these things were known as the Belga grass trees. Belga is an Aboriginal word that means black boy. So for years they were referred to as black boys. That's no longer PC. I get it. So. Xanathoria is a bit of a hard one, so I think we're just going to call them grass trees. But there's plenty of them up there, and some of these things are amazingly old. You should not in any way mess with them. You get one, I'm about six foot four, you get one that's my height, that thing could have seen Captain Cook sail past, certainly Matthew Flinders, so take it easy on these little fellas. They are very, very old biological entities indeed. Well, that's it, folks. Hey, John, how'd you like to find this cave? That's hexagonal basalt off an island in Japan, but it just looks so stunning. That's a half cool. That T Rox cave, if I could find it. Anyway, that's it for this week, folks. Um, took this opportunity to do a little geology on one of Gel's videos. I've been fighting off a rotten cold. Audio is a bit crappy, but you know, the graphic equalizer, you can fix a lot of things. Uh, back into it soon. Don't forget, Get Smart's coming. It's just been a little slow. I could go out in public because, you know, there's been COVID in the family and blah 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 Anyway, no excuses. We'll get into it next week. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Yes, I see you. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. It makes this channel worth doing. So, and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Have fun. Have a great week. And keep, keep rocking. T-Rocks out. out.